Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel called Susanna Reacts where I learn all things para with your help and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and in today's video we are going to look into JC Deepak on uh, secularism and Hindu so I'm very curious that uh, I've reacted to his videos before he seemed like a very very smart guy and I think he's uh, correct me if I'm wrong very popular in India but before we jump into today's video Please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, let's get started. Presented with this kind of horrendous genocidal massacres that it has survived, reacts with this kind of judgment towards its own ancestors. Is that the division within the Hindu community is there uh, with respect to this temple exposes the fundamental Christianization of the Hindu mind wherein it fails to wrap its head around the diversity of energy spaces within Hindu dharma and it affects Hindu existence. When I speak of alienation of Hindu land, it affects everybody because then it is encroachment of our spaces. There's a reason why Ujjain is surrounded by everybody else. Kashi is surrounded by everybody else. Then you go to Kalikambal temple in Chennai, every, it's surrounded by everybody else except Hindus. I'm coming directly from the court. It's a Sunday, I know, because we have had a long day of conferences with judges today. Hence the colonial avatar. <coughs> so there's a bit of exhaustion here, but Swapandas Gupta, sir, never fails to say the right thing. He's fantastic in what he said, because I think that's most important. He touched the nub of it. So you've got facts from Dr. Jain. You've got the meta aspect from Swapanda. You've got AK-47 from Anand. <laughs> Let me just connect all these because I think that is the advantage of going at the fag end of it. What Swapanda refers to as irreverence is 100% correct and it's irreverence that comes from being the 90s kid who saw your history being massacred in textbooks. Enough is enough effectively captures our sentiment. From there you go and you try and arm yourself with knowledge so that you're in a position to disseminate it. Each time you try to present something about your history, the first thing that is missing is empathy and the first thing that is present is judgment. I don't care for what others think and this is the sentiment from the Hindu community. So Anand blames politicians, I am blaming the Hindu community. <laughs> No other community, when presented with this kind of horrendous genocidal massacres that it has survived, reacts with this kind of judgment towards its own ancestors. They were defeated because they were cowards. They were defeated because they lacked Kshatra spirit. They were defeated because they were divided. They were defeated because they were casteist. They were defeated because they were patriarchal. You can't find nothing positive about your people. What is the point of history if it doesn't take you closer to your people? What is the point of it? If history is meant to be another weapon or a stick that you use to settle scores on social media, burn it. It has no purpose according to me then. If the point is to settle, let's say, debates on social media or in friend circles or to massage your own bloated egos, what is the point of it? How are you remotely doing justice to all the efforts that Dr. Jain has just pointed out? If people shed their blood, their lives, their women, their children, their men, everybody under the sun to protect the Murti. And hundreds of years later, today we have a debate within the Hindu community whether we should take back all the occupied sites. Why should you read history if this is your reaction? After becoming aware of the of the kind of, of the trouble that we've gone through to recover one place. So what is this about? So is history your weapon to beat the Congress? Is history your weapon to beat the left? Is history your weapon to beat your friend who is a leftist or a Marxist or a communist? Is history your weapon to go closer to your ancestors? Where is the sense of empathy in trying to understand your own people? That is the curse of Indian historiography today. 
our reasons for wanting to set right history are fundamentally wrong. Why do you want it in the first place? The opening video that was going on when we sat here, I'm sorry to say this, I mean no disrespect, I found it very difficult to sit through that video. To reduce the sacrifices and the troubles of your ancestors to mere cliches and stereotypes is not done. And the worst part of our history is that it is not in the past, it is a continuing present. The challenges of the past continue today. Perhaps if you were a geographically isolated, let's say, region, so to speak, you can still afford to look at your past with a sense of, let's say, archival sense, in the sense you can look at it, huh, hua tha. so I need to understand in an academic sense, kya hua tha. everything that has happened is repeating itself. Kaal chakra phir se pe aake khada ho chuka hai. The 1920s, according to me, are no different from the 2020s. The only question that I've been constantly asking myself is, at least at this juncture, will we take the right decision instead of making the mistakes of the past? And therefore, when I look at history, I'm blunt about the fact that I'm looking at weaponizing the Hindu mind. Interesting. I'm absolutely blunt about it from a societal perspective. If you still don't know how to look out for your interest, you deserve everything that you have suffered and everything that will come your way if you don't learn from it. Somebody has to say this. The politician will not. Somebody else has to say this. I'm the last person as a lawyer to discount the importance of power. I'm the last person to say in the larger picture, in the big picture, in the calculus, it doesn't matter. 100% it matters. The, this congregation has been made possible because of the change from 2014. Let's admit that. But 2014 was made possible because there was a society yearning. Let's admit that as well. The verdict of 9th of November 2019 was made possible because of 496 years of Jaddo Jahed. By generations of people who did not know whether they'd be remembered or not. Lawyers will get their visibility. Judges will get their visibility. Who is going to talk of the Nihams and everybody else who fought for 400 years? There was a time when both these communities were fighting together to protect the Kshetra. Can you say the same thing about Punjab of today? Too uncomfortable a fact? Therefore, history is important for Bharat. I don't care whether history is important for anybody else or not. It's extremely crucial for Bharat. Now let me just share a few points based on what Swapanda pointed out. When he quotes uh, Dalrymple's position on Ashoka being half Greek, why is it that there is this dying need on the part of this white man to look for everything that is white, even in Bharat's history? So there's a fantastic book of Thomas Troutman. You should read it. It's a series of books that he's written on the Aryan invasion theory, its origins. You will never be able to understand the caste debate without understanding the history of Aryan invasion theory and vice versa. Remember that when you're reading Indian history, that is the thumb rule. So when these people come to this country, they're like, we have colonized so many places. It's like the juggernaut of the Australian team finally being defeated in Calcutta. It comes here and then it's asked, this, these guys are boggled. This fellow is black. He is an idol worshipper. He's a polytheist. And still he is culturally and spiritually superior to us. That question is repeated over and over again in their personal correspondence because they're hoping to find a fully inferior civilization, which is a defeated civilization. But a defeated civilization is not necessarily an inferior civilization. That is the realization that leads them to the point. If they are superior in some way, then that superiority must be traced back to us. And hence starts the reverse engineering of Indian history by bringing in the Aryan angle that everything that white stands for victory and therefore at some point, some fellow who was white would have come here, inseminated the blood here and from there these guys must have become victorious. That is this dying need. So around that period they had something called the tree of civilization. The tree of civilization is the 
mapping of different civilization based on their superiority and inferiority which they had mapped for themselves and who you think would be at the top of the particular pecking order it has to be the white man how is this entire thing worked out language becomes the basis for understanding somebody's race their inability to wrap their heads around sanskrit leads to the conclusion that sanskrit must necessarily be a white contribution and therefore an aryan contribution and from there starts the analysis of the aryan invasion theory we continue to spew this nonsense in today's dravidianist politics in the south this is literally pun intended the bible of the dravidianists because this is what they swear by when they push their agenda of brahmin versus non brahmin therefore aryan versus non aryan and dravidian therefore north indian versus south indian i say this i've said this before separatism of kashmir at least openly wore the kalashnikov on its sleeve dravidianism uses social justice as a weapon which is much more dangerous than ak47 not because i have a problem with the concept of social justice but anti hinduism and anti bharatism is packaged in the fantastic label of social justice warriorship so my suggestion would be try to use these platforms as moments of creating more actual practical weaponizable scholarship as opposed to creating cults around anybody if you are truly a land of seekers then seek the truth and have the guts to present the truth regardless of who is in power if you choose not to do that to quote the adage of the colonizer you are being penny wise and pound foolish and in the long run forget the long run in the next 25 year cycle which is supposed to be the touted amrit kal you will see everything that transpired in 1924 leading to 1947 repeat itself i have no interest in burnishing my secular credentials under any circumstances regardless of who is in the audience i am more interested in securing the safety of my people and my people are the hindu spirit if you don't operate if you don't operate with that sense of realism bechte rahiye sarva dharma now now finally finally i want to come to uh, sai deepak and i want to change the topic a little which you haven't touched maybe because of the paucity of time he said the division within the hindu community is there uh, with respect to this temple exposes the fundamental christianization of the hindu mind wherein it fails to wrap its head around the diversity of energy spaces within hindu dharma that's one but you see the one important conversation in this entire thing that needs to be bridged and addressed and here i'll play the peacemaker between sapanda and uh, uh, anand is just this the fact of the matter is fortunately or unfortunately there is only one political vikalp as far as hindu interest is concerned as in date from a larger hindu perspective is that good for us according to me no but there is a difference between what what should be and what is the situation today is this these are the cards on the table at this point now how do you then make sure that your causes become attractive to the politician i will proceed on the basis that you have a certain conscientious political establishment in power but it is equally important for them to cater to incentives because at the end of the day politics functions on incentives now therefore there is a part let's say idealism and then there is a part which is let's say purely political in nature the efforts that people like me and i don't wish to include me in this there are others who are full timers in this i'm a 10% part timer in that sense is that we are trying to create a critical mass of opinion that translates to two things one of two things pressure which results in incentive or pressure that results in disincentive it's not rocket science there's nothing that is close to my chest that i have to hide this is exactly what's been going on the hope is that with each passing term apart from economics we also address civilizational legacy issues because that's equally important for political survival because when i speak of illegal migration it's not an academic issue it affects everybody who's in power and it affects hindu existence 
when I speak of alienation of Hindu land, it affects everybody because then it is encroachment of our spaces. There's a reason why Ujjain is surrounded by everybody else. Kashi is surrounded by everybody else. Then you go to Kalikambal temple in Chennai, every, it's surrounded by everybody else except Hindus. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that there is a very clear intersection or overlap where the political interest meets the societal interest. It would help if both of them speak with each other, listen to each other, if there is a feedback loop and there's a handshake between both sides. Because as I said, I'm a realist. Power is important, but power for its own sake without delivery is equally not, I mean, it's, it's not desirable. Because then the question is, there was a purpose for which this, these votes have come your way. So perhaps you should push the envelope as much as possible. I think it's a setting of expectations. Wow, what a an interesting talk. I first, you know, like the, the 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 first part of the video, and especially first couple of minutes. I I don't know. Is it just me? But like he gave off at least to me. I might be it might be completely wrong perception, but he was like literally very angry. It felt he felt very angry, like very going for it, and uh, it, it clearly shows he's very passionate about what he's talking about. And now, yeah, I, you know, it was, it was still provoking, not even for, you know, like just me learning about India, but it always, like, obviously in my head, I would always try to relate it uh, to, to things here. And uh, when he talked about the history, uh, it's, it's very fascinating because obviously India has a very rich history, the oldest found texts. Uh, like Mabarata Ramayana, and um, it's—I think I feel like this video has given me a bit more insight about the kind of this the and please do correct me if I'm wrong. Like the kind of inferiority complex that might be present over there, um, that everything that you know, is perhaps like smart or whatever has to be tracked back to a white person, which is which is such a shame with the civilization of, you know, of, of this history. And, and for, for that matter, I do agree that it's important to study history, although, um, you know, as, as we all know, I, I think that history is, uh, is a written by the winners and then, interpreted there obviously certain things like the the war has happened on this day you know and there are interesting facts but understanding is within the wider context and and making a correct interpretation i think that's the challenge of of history and then trying to draw um and draw the right conclusions uh, out of that is 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 another uh, is another thing uh, as well and and that is that is that is a tricky one. But I think uh, personally, me like going back to your roots and understanding where you come from on that level, I I, I do personally believe it's important. Um, I don't that much believe it. Perhaps is happening in a way I would perhaps have imagined in my head in Slovakia either. Uh, for example, uh, fun fact: in Slovakia, we actually really don't like to study Slovak history. <laughs> Anything is better than Slovak history that I can guarantee you any kid in school, even nowadays, is going to tell you that. It feels like world history is so much easier to learn than anything Slovak. It just feels so complex, so intertwined, um, and so unrelatable that it is sad. It, you know, and I think it just also sometimes, I don't know, if... if uh, if people need to market history better or something along these lines. And uh, sometimes I believe people are not good at communicating the value, but maybe in order to communicate the value, you have to really understand the subject matter and, and draw on the context uh, well as well. Um, but um, what was interesting for me was when he was talking about him dividing Hindu community, would you be able to explain to me what exactly is happening on, over there? Why is there the divide? I, I know we, uh, I watched that movie Shabbat that never left and um, it's, it's just sad. Um, to me, I, I feel like, you know, I see, for example, in Asia, people are using white products because they want to be white. I, I will never understand it, right? Like 
a I don't come from like a imperialistic nation. I come from a slave nation, which just happened to be white. We never colonized anyone. We weren't really like out there trying to conquer countries or anything. <laughs> Slovakia is much about let's stay at home, let's cherish our family, let's bake a cake, and let's just be happy. Uh, so for me, you know, those concepts and just so you guys are understanding where I'm coming from, because when you're referring to the West, it, it's just very alien to me because I think that Slovakia is just uh, maybe anomaly like Poland has been imperial, Czech Republic has been imperial, Hungary and Austria or Austro-Hungarian Empire, Imperial Hungarians, very imperial. Uh, in that sense. So we we left, you know, next to that you have Germany, I, I say no more, uh, right? So we were just like this little small community, island, in a way, islands of its own. So for me, I obviously do not have that bigger people mentality. So I, you know, the, it's not the way we we're brought up, like even in the kind of, I was just being told recently by a friend that in Poland that you are being taught that you're great because you're Polish and I'm like wow that's interesting <laughs> like no one ever teaches anything like that in Slovakia I wonder if that is the same maybe in Bharat if you have this kind of um, national kind of uh, and and for some reason these days national is perhaps not the best word to use because it feels like you're bordering with political correctness here but you know, but like the healthy, like understanding of your culture, country, etc. Does that happen in Parat? Because it feels like it perhaps is not, or, or the, like the revivalism is coming to play. It's it's pretty fascinating, and it's very sad that um, that the history would have been molded in a way where you would think that. I just think that the whole race thing is BS. Right, like I, I personally don't believe in that. Like I, I don't think anyone is superior over the other. And I'm talking here from strictly spiritual point of view. Um, I think we should first all learn about humanity and how to be kind. But there's just so many of us on this planet, and we all have different belief systems, etc. Um, but I feel like kindness could transcend all. Um, but then again. It depends on everyone's definition of it, right? Uh, so it's it's uh, definitely a tricky subject, but uh, I'm just surprised. Uh, I don't I don't think that any race personally is superior. We're all like unique and different in our own ways, and it's sad that you know a nation would have been scarred uh, this way. So it would be interesting for me to know how is. India tackling that, like whether it being history, whether it being like people to people, like do you go guys go out and chat and you talk, let's say, about your history and things that you have learned. Um, yeah, it, it would be very interesting for me, like how uh, how this is currently happening, and and it's for selfishly for me is because I feel like maybe I can learn something from you guys uh, and apply it to to Slovakia because being under like Slovakia has been under Hungary basically or the old day Hungary for a thousand years, right? So it's a really 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 long time, and um, yeah, and 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 the thing is like we've always been slaves to. Other nations, we've always been used for the purposes of political purposes of all the surrounding nations. It's not even funny. Um, so, yeah, Slovaks don't feel proud, um, but I feel like you guys do feel very proud. And, you know, like I, I obviously can't compare Slovakia and Barat in that sense, but I hope you're getting at what I'm getting at here. So, it would be very interesting for me to understand how you are you know claiming your roots retaining and getting rid of that mentality that is not serving you in the comments below and with that being said thank you so much for watching this video with me if you did enjoy it please give a thumbs up share like and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you next one until then please do take care i am sending much much love Bye bye